Now that's my little Margie. I've been both mother and father to her since she was born. She's grown up now, and you think my job's all done, eh? <laughs> well, that's what you think. When she was little, I could spank her and make her mind me. I had control over her. I made her eat her spinach, no candy before meals. And when she disobeyed, I took her roller skates away for a week. But what can you do when a girl reaches this age? She's completely out of hand. I've got a problem, believe me. I've got a problem. That's my father. I've raised him from childhood. That is, my childhood. He's nearly 50 now, and you'd think he'd settle down, wouldn't you? Well, that's what you think. Today, he looks better in shorts on a tennis court than fellas 25. Girls wink at him, and what's worse, he winks back at them. I want a nice, old, comfortable father. I try to look after him, but he just won't settle down. I've got a problem, believe me, I've got a problem. Uh, just a minute, Granny. Can we talk this over? Won't you reconsider? No. Without this, you can't do a thing. And I'm going to make sure you don't get your hands on it. Yoo-hoo! Margie! Come in, Miss Odette. I'll be with you in a second. Come on. No, no, wait. We'll wait till nobody's home, then we'll find it ourselves. Am I excited? Dad's flying down to Havana day after tomorrow on a big deal and taking me with him. I just changed to practice up on my conga. Did you want something? Well, I did come over with something in mind. But then I thought, no use worrying you about it. So I just took care of it all by myself. <laughs> Wasn't that clever? Well, I guess so. What was it? Oh, just a little family matter. Nothing to fret your pretty head about. Go ahead. Let's see your conga. <laughs> I'm dancing a little too slow to appeal to me. You've certainly got plenty of pep for 83. Lots of people tell me I'm the liveliest some of the girls at 75. Oh, to be 75 again. Such a crazy, impetuous age, don't you? Oh, yeah. Havana. We'll be there for three or four days. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. Have you ever been to Cuba? Once. Oh, what a time I had. Dancing, romance. Oh, I know. A treasured memory of your youth. How old were you? Eighty-two. <laughs> it was last year. <laughs> You're just going to love it, Margie. Oh, I'm sure of it. Or should I say Cierto or Segura? That's Spanish. I don't see how those people down there ever understand the language. I wonder how I'm going to understand it. Of course, when I was in Mexico, it was simple. I just followed the translations on the Timali wrappers. You'll have to do one of two things, then. Either take a Spanish dictionary along, or stock up good on tamales. <laughs> if I don't see you before you go, have one for me at Sloppy Joe's. <laughs> father isn't home. Well, he won't be. He took Roberta to a show. Wonderful. A happy combination. A boy, a girl, and a father who's not at home. I'm sorry, Freddie, but you can only stay a minute anyway. What do you mean I can only stay a minute? I'm not letting anything happen to change Dad's mind about taking me to Havana. You know how he feels about you. Did you find it? Not yet. Now, let's not argue, Freddy. Just kiss me once and go. One kiss? Why didn't you tell me about this in the taxi? I don't like kissing in a cab, Freddy. It's a complex or something. With that meter clicking, I feel like somebody's keeping score. Now, kiss me. I hope he isn't a long kisser. I'm suffocating. Take 
the stairs. You might meet him coming up in the elevator. I get one kiss and I have to walk down ten floors. What about all the times you said you'd climb the highest mountain just for one kiss from me as your reward? Well, that's different. I'm already up the mountain and the reward's all shot. Good night. <laughs> He's gone. As soon as we're sure the girl's not around, we'll make a break for it. I hope you don't mind saying goodnight so early, dear, but I have a lot of reports and things to get ready for the trip. Oh, I understand. It does seem odd getting home at 10 o'clock. We're usually just starting out at this time. It'll do you good to get to bed early for change. Good night, dear. Good night, darling. Okay, come on. Margie, dear. Si, senor. Guess what I've got. I give up. What have you got? Where is he? Well, he was here, but only for a second. He just forgot his hat. That's all. Oh, really? Yes, really. Do you want to go to Havana with me? Dad, I'm telling the truth. Don't get me wrong, baby. I'm only going to open this to put my hat away. Oh, of course. That's very understandable. Well, do you feel like a ninny? I must confess, baby. I looked in there expecting to see Freddy. Come to my room a minute. I want to get something. We'll try a little experiment. What are you going to do? Oh, just a little target practice. Still say Freddy isn't in there? Go ahead, blow a hole in the door, ruin all the clothes, call the police and the landlord. Here I stand with a loaded shotgun about to shoot through the door. Still say Freddy isn't in there? No, Freddy is not in there. Go ahead, shoot. Don't shoot, Mr. Albright. I surrender. What a surprise. Why don't you stop acting? Freddie Kelly, you went home, didn't you? Freddie Kelly, I didn't know you were in the closet. How'd you get in there anyway? Well, I came back to get my hat and that fellow socked me. What fellow? The one that came out of the closet. Oh, that fellow. Cousin George. Oh, yes, he's been living in our closet for years. A bit wacky. He thinks he's an overcoat. But he's improving. He used to think he was a mattress and I had to sleep on him for two months to make him happy. Dad, stop it. You've got to believe me. You've got to believe me. Freddie went home. Oh, my swearing. Margie, you're only making it worse. Oh, please. Good night, Freddy. Please, Dad, listen to me. I never deliberately told you a lie. Until tonight. But I wasn't lying. I purposely sent Freddy home because I didn't want any trouble. Did you see Freddy come out of that closet? Yes, but he explained. There must have been somebody hiding in there. I'm sure somebody was hiding in there, too. Freddy. Do you know what it is to be telling the truth and have somebody not believe you? You've carried this about far enough. Now, when you get ready to quit the comedy and admit that Freddy's been in here all this time, then we'll reconsider your trip to Havana with me. Havana? As of right now, my only companions on the trip will be Mr. and Mrs. Madeira. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. It's not because Freddy was in here. It's because you lied to me. I love you an awful lot, but I can't take that. Now, go to bed. Hello. Oh, in here, Roberta. I know you like a book. I just knew you were going to bring me in some coffee. Yes, I'm sure you thought I might drop in. I didn't interrupt anything, did I? No, I hadn't gotten started yet. I had another little matter I had to take care of first. Oh, and how did you do with this other little matter? I never knew a girl could be so stubborn. Tell me more. I had to use a shotgun to get the result I wanted. You should have seen the expression on Freddy's face when he came out of that closet. Freddy? What did he have to do with it? Oh, I guess I got a little ahead of my story. You see, Margie had Freddy hidden in the closet. And I pretended that I was going to shoot through the door with my shotgun in order to get her to admit that he was in there. And this other girl you've been talking about, it was Margie. Well, who else? There's no other girl around. Vern, I'm sure you started to tell me the truth, but then you got cold feet and made up this business about Freddy. Started to tell the truth? If you confess right now, this instant, I'll forgive you. Confess? 
Vern, don't try my patience. Who was that girl? Girl? G-I-R-L. You know, darling, one of those things that smell like perfume, and men always walk up to them and say, Pardon me, haven't we met someplace before? Who was she? I don't know what you're talking about. Your timing is a little off, Mr. Albright. I bumped into her as she was leaving. I felt like the second shift coming to work. Oh, Roberta, you've got to believe me. Uh, Margie! Margie! Come here a minute! There's no other girl here. Margie will tell you. Tell her what? Roberta thinks I had some girl in here. And I guess I only think I bumped into her, too. Oh, so that's why you sent me to bed. Oh, he sent you to bed, did he? Roberta, just as sure as I'm sitting here, there wasn't another girl in this apartment. Dad, you've carried this about far enough. Quit the comedy and admit there was a girl here. Now you cut that out. You know darn well there wasn't another girl in here. You believe that? Did you see her? No, but it's pretty obvious he's hiding something, isn't it? I'm not hiding a thing. I'm telling the absolute truth. Of course, Roberta, in Dad's defense, he's never deliberately told you a lie. Oh, thanks, baby. No, Roberta, I've never deliberately told you a lie. Until tonight. You tricked me. Well. Roberta, you've got to listen to me. I promise you, there was no other girl in here. It isn't because the girl was here. It's because he lied. You can't take that, can you? I never thought things would turn out like this. Goodbye, Vern. Why didn't you just tell her the truth? I told her the truth. Oh, come now, Dad. She couldn't have bumped into any girl going out of here because there wasn't any girl in here. And Freddie couldn't have been hiding in that closet because I sent him home. I saw Freddie in that closet. And Roberta saw the girl coming out of here. Oh, at least, honey, you've got to believe me. When you called me in here, I found this hanging on the closet doorknob. It isn't Roberta's and it isn't mine. Then there was a girl in here. Margie, how many times have I told you about keeping the doors locked? Shall we call this Exhibit A, or shall we talk about my going to Havana? That's blackmail. No, it's pink and white lace mail. You square me with Roberta, and I'll take you to Havana. You aren't asking very much. Well, then find out who that girl was. Well, that's going to be about as easy as finding out who the man was, the one who clipped Freddy. Wait, wait, that's a clue. There must have been two of them, a man and a woman. Maybe they're a team. At least that's something to go on. This is going to be an interesting caper. Margie, won't you please try to understand? I just don't want to get mixed up in any more of your crazy schemes. You don't want to help me. I'm not a detective. If we could just find that girl and get Dad off the hook with Roberta, think how he'd appreciate it. Why, he'd like you for the rest of your life. Yeah, but if anything went wrong, he might fix it so there'd be no rest of my life. Hey, this is one time you're not going to get me into trouble. I won't play detective. I won't play detective. Tracy's the name, Dick Tracy. Well, we know there are two of them, a man and a woman, and we have a woman's handkerchief. A uh, handkerchief. Well, obviously, we're looking for a woman with a nose. The door Oh, you just unlocked it. No, I didn't, and I know I locked it before we went out. I know it. Let's go have some more lunch. Oh, huh? this is our chance. Somebody's probably in there right now. Come on. You look in the den. I'll check the living room and out on the terrace. Maybe I'd better look in the closet. They say a criminal always returns to the scene of the crime. All right. Try the closet first. I think this country will do nicely, <laughs> Mr. Upright. Thank you, Mr. Madeira, and gracias. Tomorrow we leave for your beautiful Havana to conclude our business there. The garden spot of the world, your native country. Gracias. I bet anything that you've been rehearsing this little speech ever since before I came here. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be present when the contracts are signed in Havana, so I'd like to take this opportunity of saying a few things slightly in advance. Welcome, Senor Madero. Welcome to the... Enough. Enough, Mr. Honeywell. We understand perfectly what you are trying to say. That if you had a chance, you would rob us cacai. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just trying to be funny. I'm trying uh, to have what you say uh, a little fun. Shall we talk about tonight now? Oh, yes, the going away party. We're going to have it at Albright's place. That's right. And here's the address. Gracias. And here are the keys. I may be just a little late. If I am, go in and make yourselves at home. Albright's had a little misunderstanding with a friend. Well, a lady. And he wants to drop by her office to see if he can't persuade her to join us tonight. Till tonight, then. We go in like you say. Senor. Oh, if you get there first, leave the door open for me. As you say. 
just one question. What is it, Freddy? This latest plan of yours. Let me out of it, please. Freddy? That's what I thought. Okay, give me a quick rundown. How does it work? We pretend to be going out for the evening. They think we're gone and break in again. But we sneak up the back stairs and in through the kitchen. Then you're going to sock somebody on the jaw. Well, that'll be a big switch. Come on. <laughs> well, let's go out, Freddy. Okay, let's go out. Okay, let's go out. We won't be back until late, will we? No, we won't be back until late, will we? Oh, hello, Miss Odette. We're going out. Yeah, we're going out. Fine. Have a good time. <laughs> yes, I heard a rumor to that thing way back in my kitchen. Good night. Good, good night. night. We're taking the stairs for exercise. They must think I'm getting deaf in my old age. The Star Wars apartment is right over there, sir. Thank you. Was I sitting on something? Siempre me mareo. Parece que no hay nadie. Yo creo que no. Bueno, pues entonces, como tengo la llave, abrimos. Qué pena. Muy simpática la gente. Ahí está. Pásale. the main switch. We know our way around. Anybody else will be under a handicap. Now, where's that fuse box? It must be around here someplace. Yeah. Mira, tienen televisión. Ah, televisión, sí. ¿Qué programa habrá esta noche? Oh, seguramente Jopalonga Cassidy. Me alegro. Él me gusta mucho más que el señor Wild Bill Hickok. Ay, ¿qué pasó con las luces? Oh, no be a switch. I'll tell fine. Let's see. Terrible time to make a discovery like this, but I think I'm a coward. Don't be silly. Just let him have it the way he let you have it. And don't make any noise. We don't want to tip off his girlfriend if she's in there. <laughs> we'll tie him up and gag him, too, so he can't warn that girl. What do we tie him with? There's some cord in the kitchen. We'll get some adhesive tape to gag him with. Come on. Mr. Honeywell. I'll get you into the fresh air. He's gone. I guess I didn't hit him hard enough. He's probably still around. Keep your eyes open. Come on. I'll bring you some water. That will wake you up. Somebody struck me. <laughs> Why are the light switches around here? Margie. Thank <laughs> you. 
wait till Dad hears about this. Boy, will we be sitting pretty. I'll turn on the light. Madera. This is a job for the police. Never hear when you want them. I'll take the stairs. Freddy! Freddy! What happened? Wake up! Wake up! We've got to tie up that woman! Well, just forget it, Vern. I don't want any ill feelings with you going away. But I did see a girl come out of your apartment. But, Roberta, I want you to believe me. No girl came out of me. Come on, both of you. There's the girl now. Mr. Albright, this is my granddaughter and her brother David. They have an apology to make. Ever since yesterday, they've been sneaking in and out of your apartment, trying to find a power of attorney paper I hid in there. We're sorry, Mr. Albright. I hope it didn't cause you any inconvenience. Uh, not at all. As a matter of fact, it may be a very good lesson to all of us. Eh, hey, Roberta? That's really generous of you, Mr. Albright. And I can promise you it won't happen again. Come, children. Well? I believed you all the time. Good heavens, then. Mrs. Madeira. Mrs. Madeira? Why, that's Mr. Madeira. Dad, you're just in time. Tie her up and put her with the other one. Tie her up? Yes, it's going to be a long time before these two prowlers do any more prowling. I don't know what happened to Freddy, but you can thank him for knocking that bird out. That bird? <laughs> that bird happens to be Mr. Madeira, and that's Mrs. Madeira. Your client? Your big deal? And your trip to Havana. When they come to and find out that a member of my own family has been responsible for this, this atrocity... You mean... Now, wait a minute, Dad. It was dark in here. They don't know who clipped them. Suppose it had been a prowler, a real prowler. Then they couldn't blame you or me, could they? <laughs> Daddy, you know how badly I want to go to Havana. Uh -huh. You've tried awfully hard to make it possible for me to go, haven't you? Uh -huh. And you wouldn't want all you've gone through to go down the drain now, would you? Uh -huh. Then would you do just one more little thing for me? Uh -huh. oh, I knew I could count on you. Close your eyes. Huh? Close your eyes. Hmm. Right in here, officer. What's going on in here? I, I have been hit two times. Yeah, I got me twice too. Ay, Felipe, fíjate nomás cómo se apagaron los luces. Yo salí para allá y una persona se me echó encima. Me dio un porrazo. Yo me caí, me desmayé. No sé lo que pasó. ¿Qué pasó? My wife said, "What happened?" <laughs> Well, I don't know what would have happened if my daughter hadn't come in and knocked him out for you. This is your daughter? And she knocked him out? Uh, uh, yes. Senorita, you are so brave. You saved my husband. Muchas gracias. How come such a beautiful girl like a tender little flower had the courage of El Toro? El Toro? Oh, that's Spanish for bull. <laughs> Excuse me. 